Good morning, St. Andrews, and welcome to all of our guests who are joining us online. We're so glad that you're here, and we feel blessed to have you among us celebrating and worshiping and praising God together. Today is a special day um, at St. Andrews and for the church as a whole. Today is Christ the King Sunday. It's where we celebrate the fact that Jesus Christ is our King. And Consecration Sunday is the Sunday where we gather in all of our gifts that we are gonna give, going to give to St. Andrews for this year to help the mission of St. Andrews, and we consecrate those gifts to the glory of God and pray that they will be used by us and by those whom we partner with in our community for the greater comfort and healing of our community and for the needs of its people. So this Consecration Sunday, I pray that you are feeling blessed. I hope as we move toward Thanksgiving and towards the Advent season and look forward towards Christmas, that you are safe and that you are well and that you are staying healthy. I hope you are not missing family too much during this time, and I hope that you will be able to have a blessed celebration, whatever that looks like, on Thanksgiving. And remember that the blessings of this life are good, that God is good, and that God is still providing for us. Now let us prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship the Lord our God. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Israel declares himself shepherd and ruler of his people, gathering them, providing for them, protecting them, guiding them, and judging them. All these things he does for us, his sheep too. The first reading according to Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 11 through 16 and 20 through 24. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries, and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the water courses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture. And the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land. And they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed. And I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of the Lord. We will read Psalm 100, beginning and ending with the refrain, and stopping at half verse. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter, her, enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. The same power that God used to raise Jesus from the dead, he now uses to bring life to each of our lives. The second reading according to Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us to, who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. 
I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food? Or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you, a stranger, and welcomed you, or naked, and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick, or in prison, and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you. Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it for the least of these, you did not do it for me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. I speak to the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm moved to preach to you this morning about who is your king? Who is your king, and how do we pay tribute to that king? You know, for, for a long time in, in the history of the um, Hebrew Testaments, um, there was this uh, people that had no king, right? They're wandering through the desert. They come into the promised land, this land of milk and honey, and they have no king, and they're trying to establish themselves in the, in the land by taking all these territories. And over and over and over again, if you read the book of Judges, it says this was before they had a king. And then we get into the book of Samuel, and Samuel warns the people as they say, actually, all these other nations have kings. We should have a king also. And Samuel says, I don't know if you really want a king. Like, this doesn't seem like a very good idea because if you have a king, you're going to have to pay tribute to that king. And the king is going to kind of take advantage of you. And kings really aren't all that they're cracked up to be. You have to support them, and they have power over you. I don't think you really want that. And the people of Israel insisted, yes, we want a king, yes, we want a king. And so, of course, Samuel anointed um, Saul as the first king over Israel. And so I have this question, who is your king and what tribute do we have to pay? Because if there's a king, there's this idea, right? If there's a king, you have to pay tribute, you have to pay taxes, or you have to, you have to do some sort of obeisance to the king. And this is true of all kings. And so um, when we think about Jesus today on our Christ the King Sunday, on this consecration Sunday for us, here at St. Andrews. I want to show you how Jesus actually flips this idea of kingship and paying tribute. Because while we have these kings like Saul, or we have the kings that come after David and Solomon, who do not live up to the standard that God expects from them, and they do what is good in their own eyes, Jesus does what is good in the eyes of God. And whereas the people of Israel have to pay taxes and they have to give up land, and if the king wants to throw a celebration, they have to give sheep and, and, and make sacrifices, the kings of Israel take and take and take from the people. But what does Jesus do? Jesus says, the tribute actually that you owe me is not the kind of regular tribute that you would assume. I'm not asking you to pay me taxes. I'm not asking you to sacrifice sheep for me. I'm not, at, I'm not taking land from you. What does Jesus ask as a tribute? Jesus asks as a tribute that you take care of the people who are less fortunate than you. Jesus's tribute is not that you pay tribute to the king himself, 
You pay tribute to the king by taking care of the king's people. You, t you pay tribute to the king by taking care of the king's people. That's a different kind of king entirely from what we see in the Hebrew Testament and what we see in all the monarchies throughout all of history, throughout the entire world. This is a new kind of king, a Christ king, who will lead us to eternal life. And so he says, what I need you to do is, I need you to see when somebody's hungry and give them food. I need you to see when somebody's thirsty and give them something to drink. I need you to see when somebody's a stranger and I need you to welcome them. I need you to see when somebody does not have clothes, when somebody is in prison or when somebody is a sick. I need you to go visit them. I need them, you to give them the coat off your back. That is the tribute that you pay to this king. That is the tribute that you pay to Christ. Those are the taxes that you owe being one of the sheep in the flock of the good shepherd. Those are the taxes that you owe. And there are people who, for whatever reason, don't think that that's an important thing to do. They get everything in their lives, as we said. They've been provided everything in their lives, as we all are. And they look at those things and they say, Wow, I did a great job. Look at all this stuff I have. I did a great job. Look at all this stuff I have. I'm my own king. Or they find another king to follow. They find a king in the political realm. Or they find a king in the religious realm. Or they find a king in the scientific realm. They find a king somewhere in their lives and they pay tribute to that king. The king that did not provide for them. The king that asks something specifically from them that they have to give to that person. Rather than to the other people around them. Those are the kinds of kings of this world. The kings that ask you everything for themselves and not everything for the good of the people who belong to the kingdom of heaven. We follow a king who is the king of the kingdom of heaven, whose main concern is not for himself, but for the well-being of all the creatures that he has created from the beginning of time, all the creatures that he blesses, all the children that he has consecrated, consecrated for love and peace and justice. We follow a king that doesn't ask for himself. He asks on behalf of his children. And we are also his children. And when we need clothing, when we need food, when we need something to drink, when we're sick, people come to us in the name of that king and we should do the same. You know, we have this uh, Consecration Sunday, and when you offer things, it's consecrated. The, the main things that we consecrate in the church are the bread and the wine, um, which I'm sure, like you, or like me, that you miss. That we bring these elements of our labor and our love, this bread and this wine, and we offer it to God, and we consecrate it. And you know, when we consecrate it, it's not the priest up there sitting there and doing, you know, saying the words, and all of a sudden these things are now holy. That's not what consecration means. Consecration, consecration is a relationship, a Trinitarian relationship between the people of God. The priest is the person who's helping to mediate that relationship, and God, God who's in that consecration with us. Consecration means to make something sacred together. That we make things sacred together. That with God and with each other, we are consecrating things. And you know what we can consecrate? Not just bread and not just wine. We break the bread. We share the wine. We each take a little bit of it into ourselves, that thing that God provides us, and then we go out as broken people into the world and we offer that consecration to other people. We try to make things sacred with other people, not just in the church, but everywhere that we go, as broken pieces of the body of Christ, longing for the kingdom of heaven, we go out as consecrated people, people made holy together, so that we can go out and consecrate the world. And when we do that, the way that we consecrate the world is that we go out and we give people food, and we give people something to drink, and we give people a coat if they're naked, 
and we visit people if they're sick, and we visit people in prison. You know, I spent I, I spent the years that I was in seminary going and doing prison ministry. It was one of the most amazing things that you'll ever do. If you've ever read scripture with somebody who is in prison, it will give you a whole new sense of what it means to be free and what freedom actually means to somebody who is not free to go wherever they want. It's an incredible thing. You learn and you take in so much more, actually, f from, from being with people that you visit. Uh, you know, another thing that, that, that's hard um, is visiting people right now. And it is, of course, in the time of coronavirus, you say, well, Father Chris, I would love to go visit people in the hospital, but actually we're not allowed to visit people in the hospital. And I would say to you, you're completely right. You're totally right. Although we do have technology now where we can talk to each other on the phone and, and visit that way. But I know the pain of this actually personally. And we have a, a family friend um, who's in the hospital right now. And it's a friend of my in-laws. And um, they're, they're um, deeply lovely and, and um, wonderful people. And they're so important in our lives too. They're not just friends of our in-laws, but they're friends of ours also. We've spent so many uh, times getting together and eating meals. And um, our friend Chris uh, is in the hospital right now. And, and, you know, his wife Barb wants to be with him. And for the first 24 hours that he was in the hospital, they actually said, no, you can't come in because of coronavirus. We can only take him. And she had, she had to leave him and, and, and for at least 24 hours was not uh, allowed to go in and see him. And, and maybe that's just kind of the the place where we are right now but she was eventually led in to go see him and and um, we're grateful for that we were praying for that and so that prayer has been answered for us and I know there are so many thousands hundreds of thousands maybe millions of people who are in that same place right now who would love to go visit loved ones in the hospital or see loved ones who are sick who are not able to because of the way that um, coronavirus is going right now but Jesus is there in that with us Jesus is visiting all those sick people for us just as we would like to visit our sick the reason Jesus asks us to do that is because Jesus does that also you see that Jesus this king only asks us to do the things that Jesus himself did and Jesus himself does still today. Jesus clothes those who are naked. Jesus visits those who are sick. Jesus visits those who are in prison, feeds the hungry, gives water, living water to the thirsty. Jesus asks us to do the things that he himself does. And so even in this time of coronavirus, we know that Jesus is where we cannot go. And that Jesus is with people, healing them. And that we can be a part of that. And when we are a part of that, it's beautiful. And it's how we know that we are, we, are going to, we are going to receive everlasting life. Is because we're participating in the resurrection life that Jesus offers us. We are living a consecrated life. We are blessing things and making things holy together. And so I ask you today, what are the things in your life that you will consecrate with St. Andrews? What are the things that you can do to feed the hungry, to give water to the thirsty, to clothe those who are naked? How are we going to visit those who are sick? Or those who are in prison in a time like this where we can't get together physically. How can, we, how can we change or adjust the way that we do things on a normal basis so that we can still continue to do those things that Jesus asks us to do? How do we continue to pay tribute to our King, our God, in, in times that are so unprecedented? I would say to you that there are a lot of things that we're doing right now that we can continue to do the way we have done. We're still running our food pantry out of the church. We're still doing the free store food bank. We're still going up and raking up leaves. We're still going out and, and taking meals 
to kids at schools. We're still calling one another. We're still gathering with one another for worship. We may not be consecrating bread and wine, but we are consecrating one another by being together. And when I see these emails come through on the, on the email chain, you know, I, I saw this week, um, we had prayers going out on the email chain for this tragic event um, that, that has happened um, just kind of associated with our parish life. And that, that prayer, that being with people who need healing, and, 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 and um, it's just so touching and it reminds me of the kingdom to which we belong. And, and we've, we're consecrating one another in that. Now, we're coming up on this stewardship time and this Consecration Sunday reminds us that we're to bring our gifts our gifts to this special place that holds a special that holds a special place in our hearts, St. Andrews, for the mission work that is happening at St. Andrews for the kingdom of God. And usually we get together and we have a big celebration and we consecrate these things right before Thanksgiving, this the holiday where we celebrate what God has given to us. And we consecrate the gifts. And we though we can't be together, I still ask you, when your pledge card comes in the mail this week. Will you think about what you can give, what can be consecrated, what we can make holy together, even while we're apart? What kind of gift can you give financially, but also what kind of gift can you give mission-wise in clothing or feeding or bringing nourishment to those who need it, healing and prayers to those who are sick, prayers for those who are in prison? advocacy for people who are wrongly imprisoned. What can we do together and what can we consecrate together? What will you do with your gifts? What will you do with the things that God has given you in this week where we think about the thanks we should be giving for those things we've received? You know, I've mentioned a few times that I hope one of the things that you give will be a little bit of your enthusiasm and a little bit of your welcome and a little bit of your evangelistic zeal to going out and telling people about St. Andrews. Telling people to come check us out on our worship space. Check out the music that we're offering. Check out the sermons that are being given. I ask you, what are the things that you will bring with you to church? What are the things that we can all consecrate together and make holy? How will you this year in these unprecedented times show that you are still grateful and willing to pay tribute to the King of your life, Jesus Christ our Lord? I pray that you will find this sermon to be motivating, that you will find these words to uh, Spark something in you that will make you want to give. Give of yourself. I hope that you don't feel too tired or too anxious or too worried to think about what you have been given in your life and how much positivity there is in the world and how prayer can always bring you back to a calmness of spirit and to a lessening of anxiety. I pray that you will find generosity in your heart to give to St. Andrews and through St. Andrews to give to our community and to give to the world because Jesus has showed us the way and now it's our job to be the sheep of his hand, the people of his pasture, and to go out and do the things that the king has showed us to do. If we can do that, the world is going to be okay. And so I say to you, who is your king, and how will you pay tribute to him? Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, 
Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Today we have a special litany for Thanksgiving. The response is, we thank you, Lord. Let us give thanks to God, our Father, for all his gifts so freely bestowed upon us. We thank you, Lord. For the beauty and wonder of your creation in earth and sky and sea. We thank you, Lord. For all that is gracious in the lives of men and women, revealing the image of Christ. We thank you, Lord. For our daily food and drink, our homes and families and our friends. We thank you, Lord. For minds to think and hearts to love and hands to serve, we thank you, Lord. For health and strength to work and leisure to rest and play, we thank you, Lord. For the brave and courageous who are patient in suffering and faithful in adversity, we thank you, Lord. For all valiant seekers after truth, liberty, and justice. We thank you, Lord. For the communion of saints in all times and places. We thank you, Lord. Above all, we give you thanks for the great mercies and promises given to us in Christ Jesus our Lord. To him be praise and glory with you, O Father and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. We pray for healing, comfort, and strength for Harry Turnage, Christopher Garrison, Andre Surratt, the James Williams family, Tate and Ann Greenwald, Jeannie Hayes, George and Rosetta Hall, Susan Gordon, Gail Davis, Gail Jackson, Vicki Washington, Miss Mary Herring and family, Carmelita Goodwin, Gail Jolivet, Susan Shackelford, Joseph Meyer, Bishop Thomas Bridenthal, Alan Harris, Donna Rogers, Linda Tucson, Charlotte, and Robert Wilson, and for all health care professionals, and for all St. Andrew's members who need healing. We pray for those in retirement communities, especially Corinne Blanton, Eleanor Bonner, Jeannie Hayes, and Marjorie Parham. We also give thanks for November birthdays, Agnes Hall, and Jennifer Claire Johnson. We pray for those in military, law enforcement agencies, fire departments, and EMT specialists, and for all first-line workers during the pandemic and their families, especially Tyrone Hall Jr., Darren Hall, Ernest R.J. Harris, James A.S. Harris, and Brian Hurd. And we also pray for the forgiveness of our sins. So let us confess our sins against God and our neighbors. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, 
that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in everlasting life. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Now remember, if there's anybody with whom you need to make peace, I pray that you would stop the video at this point and call them and make peace with them. And then come back and join us for the blessing of music shared and a few more prayers. God is up to something 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 So get ready Get ready For your miracle God is up to something God is up to something I believe it's up to something My God is up to something So get ready Get ready For your miracle Eyes have not seen Ears have not heard all of the wonderful things God has in store for you. So get ready, get ready for your miracle. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard all of the wonderful things. God has in store for you. So get ready. Get ready for your miracle. Whatever you're praying for, it's on the way. Whatever you're praying for, it's on the way. You pray every day. And then you pray all night long. I got a message for you today. It's on the way. It's on the way. Yeah, it's on the way. So get ready. Get ready for your miracle. God is up to something. God is up to something I believe is up to something My God is up to something So get ready Get ready For your miracle Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Accept, O Lord, our thanks and praise for all that you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, 
for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us at tasks which demand our best efforts and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your son Jesus Christ for the truth of his word and example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation, for his dying through which he overcame death, and for his rising to life again in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your spirit that we may know him and make him known through him at all times and in all places, may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.